we are going to start our presentation. What are you doing up here? I thought you were here. Each task was its own, each candy is its own individual piece. So that was several tasks to be accomplished during their shift, whether it's an eight hour shift, a 10 hour shift, a four hour shift, doesn't matter. That was their job, was to wrap all the candies, which were all of the tasks. So the goal is to do all of your tasks during that day. That is the goal, to do your tasks every day. So what is supposed to be assigned to you is enough work to keep you busy during the day, but not enough to keep you overloaded to where it wraps around to the following day. There should also not be so few tasks that you end up sitting around with nothing to do. So we had the example of the manager who was coming in, and the very first thing she said was, if you don't get all these candies wrapped, you're fired. So she was setting the expectation. And then when the conveyor belt started moving a little quicker, there was a comment made that I don't think we can keep up. So this really falls back on management to make sure that the workload matches the abilities of the person who is performing those tasks because everybody performs at a different level. So it's a management issue 
if somebody does not is not able to get all their tasks completed. Maybe they need a little more training so they understand how to do their tasks more efficiently. Or maybe management needs to hire more people to help handle that workload. That is how the tasking system originated, and that's what it was built for. Tasking system was written by myself back in 2003. It has remained very much unchanged over the last 11 years. I've used it in several businesses. And it's worked quite well when people understand what the purpose of it is. So it is a piece of work to be done, a simple task. You either have completed your task or you have not completed your task. It was a task. It was a small piece. Now, if somebody sends you a big project using the tasking system, what you will want to do is piece that out into the different pieces it will take to accomplish that goal. And then you may want to call on your team members to help you out with the different pieces of the project, which are the tasks. So if you're asked to do a big project, you might send a task to Craig and say, can you help me with this? And it shouldn't be something that overwhelms Craig because he's already got 50 tasks. It should be, well, I've been doing my tasks all day long. Each of my tasks is a five to 10 minute thing. So yeah, I can take on another five to 10 minute thing. I'm here to help you out. Another thing tasks have been really helpful for is questions within the company. Um, we've used it for um, the equivalent of a uh, memo, right? If there's an announcement to be made, you can easily send it out. And really the task that's occurring when somebody sends you a memo is, were you aware of this? Have you read this? So once you have read it, you have completed the task. And you said, that the task was read this, or have you read this, or were you aware of this? So you send them right back. And reading something is typically a few minutes. So it's not something that's meant to be overwhelming to you. Now, another thing the tasking system was never intended to do was a repository of information. It's not a notepad. It's not a Word document. It is not a place to store your passwords. We have a system for storing passwords. It was meant for simple tasks to be completed. And think about this, if you don't complete your tasks on a daily basis, you're holding up the rest of the assembly line because there are other people waiting on those things to be accomplished. And I'm sure you've experienced that as a salesperson, you've, you've closed the deal. You need this website to get built. And in order for a website to get built, there are a series of tasks and a series of different people who have to all put their hands in there and help out. There's a graphics person, there's a copywriter, there's you know, there's a customer service rep, there's a number of people that are there to help out with that process. So you've probably felt that, that pain a little bit when you've assigned a job to be done on a website and it got stuck somewhere because somebody was holding the task. And that brings us to the next piece. Uh, tasks are meant to be held by one person at a time. If you assign a task to someone else, it leaves your sphere of influence and goes into their sphere of influence. And you are now left waiting for them to accomplish that task. Now, if it's been two days and you're wondering what's going on with that task, there are two ways you can find out what's going on with that task. One is you can virtually peek over their shoulder up at the top of your task bar there, you can pull that down and you can select their name and you can see their entire task list and even the prioritization that they have of what's getting done when. Another way you could look up that task is if there was a specific keyword that you would put in there, you could search for that and it should pull up that task no matter who it belongs to. So you can again virtually peek over their shoulder and understand uh, what's going on. Now, if you do that and get in the task, and no notes have been added to that task, yeah. and it just says exactly what you said, yeah. there. then that doesn't help you either. So the process is actually that the person who receives the task, they're not supposed to add any notes right away, but once they've done anything along the, that task, whether they've called somebody and left a voicemail, or you know they, they looked at their records and they couldn't find it or whatever, they should be updating that task so that you can, again, peek over their shoulder and see where they're at with that project. 
This eliminates a lot of miscommunication within a company. This is a huge selling point, guys. One of the biggest problems in companies is miscommunication, small businesses, because they don't have processes in place. And there's always that he said, she said. There's always that, well, you didn't tell me that. Or you told me to do it the other way, and now you're telling me to do it this way. Like, no, I, I did tell you that way, but then I told you not to do it that way. No, you didn't. You eliminate all that verbal confusion by utilizing the tasking system for the manager to be able to send tasks to all of the staff and, and explain what needs to be done. And you also have your priority levels. So you can say, this is urgent. You got to get this done first. And that task list is dynamic. So it's constantly changing in priorities. So you can assign five medium priority things and the staff member may be working on one of those medium priority things. And then while he's working on that, you can add a high priority. As soon as he completes that medium that he was in the middle of working on, he's going to go back to his task list to see what's the next thing I should be doing. And he'll see, ooh, a high just popped in there. Oh, I need to do the high next. So it's another thing we've encountered is some people will look at their task list in the morning and they'll copy the information into a notepad and they work off of their notepad and never looking back at their task list, which defeats the purpose because you're taking a dynamic environment and moving it into a static environment, which never changes. So if somebody comes along with something very important that needs to be done and they try to pop it in the top of your task list, you don't see it. So it was never intended that you would read your task list in the morning when you come in, like that you would read every line. You shouldn't have to do that. When people tell me, well, I'm looking to see if there's anything that's really important that I need to do. Well, that should be the thing on the top. So do the thing on the top first. And why confuse your brain? You just had a nice restful night's sleep. You got your coffee, you sit down at your desk, your brain's clear. Do the first task and don't fill your head with a bunch of stuff because you'll be able to focus better on that one single task. Going back to the video, they had one task to perform at a time. They were not supposed to wrap two at the same time. So why would you fill your head with more information than you need? One task, the top one. Don't look at every single that, That's going to overwhelm anybody. Uh, journey of a million miles starts with? First step. One step. And what comes after the first step? The second step, don't think about the journey. Don't think about the destination. Don't think about, that's a long ways. You just do what you got to do right now. First step. So I'm in the demo right now. So we have some demo tasks to look at. So here I can see this one has been completed. First of all, we have three categories here. We have the inbox, we have the recurring, and we have everything else. So the intent here is that if something new has been sent to me, it will appear in the inbox. Now it is intended that once you have read it, at least the first time, so you have an idea what's going on, that it drops out of the inbox. It's not an inbox thing anymore. We need you to be aware of what happened today. So you're supposed to read your inbox every day. And when you read each one on there, it is supposed to drop out of the inbox so that your inbox will be clear and ready to receive more new um, pertinent information up to the moment. So if you read all those in the morning and people send you tasks throughout the day, if you look at it again at four o'clock, you should see some new stuff in there. And you should read them, and because they came in today, might be important, you should read them. And at that point when you read them, if somebody sends you a task with a priority level of, uh, of an urgent, and you read it and you go, that's not really urgent. I've got more important things to do. You are allowed to reprioritize it. It's your task list. You prioritize it how you think is, is appropriate. They thought it was urgent though. Right, they thought it was urgent and it's really up to you because you control your own destiny, your own life, and what you do from moment to moment. So it's up to you to reprioritize. Um, and then if they peek over your shoulder and they notice that you reprioritized it, they'll know that you had other things more important to do. When you say think over someone's shoulder, do you mean click on that drop down yeah. tab that says like... So if I go up here, and I think we gave some to Matt. Oh, Matt's done all his tasks. I can see that. I can look at John. 
John has two tasks. And then I can go back to myself by going to my tasks. And I'm right back where I was. So the inbox is for what's immediately, ha what has recently happened. Um, so we can see that there's a completed task here. Now what this means is that this person originally sent a task to someone else to get done. And they checked the box that says, notify me when this task is complete, which is right here. And it defaults to yes, because most people want to know when the tasks get done. But if you don't want to know for whatever reason, you can set that to no, and these tasks will not bounce back to you when they're completed. But really, a completed task, all it requires is that you open it up and see if there's any notes, make sure it was done correctly, and then you hit complete. Once you hit complete, it's gone. Now, it can always be resurrected. Nothing ever leaves forever, but it's gone. It's done, it's completed, it's off the list. So, um, another question that's come up is, well, Dave, I want to be able to find my tasks after I've read them or completed them. There's actually quite a simple solution for this that's going to take a little bit of work on your part. Let's take this low task here. It's called your login, it's number 11. And let's say we, we're done with it, we completed it, but we want to keep this uh, employee ID and password. We want to be able to find those again later. So either up here or down here in the body, it doesn't matter where, I can create my own hashtag. If anyone's familiar with Twitter, or I don't know if Facebook does it, but um, you can create your own hashtag. I'm going to call this test1. And now I'm going to complete the task. So it's not going to show up anymore. It's, it's gone from the active task list. And the task list is intended to be completed today. That is the intention. Now, obviously, if somebody sent you a task at 4.59 PM, you're not expected to hang around and get it done. At some point, your tasks have to roll over to the following day. Um, but the intention is that you would finish all of your tasks each day. Uh, so now that that's gone, how do I find it again? I can come up here to search tasks, and I can put my pound sign back in. And I can do test one, and I can hit search. There it is. Now, if all of you start using the hashtag test one, you're going to be right back where you started with confusion and pages and pages of tasks coming up. So perhaps you'll want to use your first name and then some other kind of a, a tag. Um, you can create tags called hashtag important or hashtag Craig important, because if you do important, everybody else does important, you're all going to see all stuff. Or hashtag remember me. Right? Remember you can hashtag? create any you hashtag you want. In the... Is it added to the notes? Yeah. In Either, way. Search. Search. Either way. Either so, way. You can do it in the body, too. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to create a hashtag here. Universal search. And I'm going to call test two. I'm going to put that in the body. And now I'm going to search for test two. Hashtag test two. So there it is. But wait, there's more. You don't even have to use. Let's, let's take this one here. It says leaks. I'm going to create a hashtag that doesn't have a hashtag in it. I'm going to use an asterisk. Dave one. And I'm going to complete it. It's gone. It's not here anymore. I can come up here and I can search for Dave one. There it is. So really, this is a tool, an organizational tool. But it's only as effective as a person who is organizing it. Like, I don't want to forget what the hell I was just doing, yeah. right? But I'm saying I'm going to put it on hold because somebody just called and I have to get into their record. And now I've just lost anything else that I was typing that was sort of like mid task. I was in the middle of typing something and somebody else, uh, uh, somebody else had walked in the door. So, Craig, I'm very familiar with your screen, with your Chrome, and all of your tabs. You love that, right? I'm very familiar with that. Right. Um, what, what I do if I'm in a task, and I get interrupted with a phone call, is I leave the tasking screen right where it is, and I'll go to that dashboard icon, and I'll right click, and I'll open in a new tab. And now I'm clean. Control right click. What, however you want to do it. Right click. 
I'm in a clean spot. I can work with that person. And when that, when I'm done, when I hang up that phone and I've entered my CRM notes, I close that tag. And what happens to my screen? It when goes right back to the one more screen. What? And that's exactly workflow wise. That's what you should be doing, right? You should be working on your most priority, priority task. And then as soon as you get interrupted, you hold on a second. That's your pause. You move over, you handle the CRM issue, you close it, you're right back where you were. Right. And, you've, and you already started typing your notes and they're still there. And you just finish and you hit submit. 